<laughs> Boy, some of y'all about to be mad. Some of y'all about to be real, real mad. Y'all about to be higher than 45. It's about to be some real smoke in the city. Luckily for me, I'm impartial. What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sport topic, and today we're going to talk some football. Houston Texan football. Today, we're going to talk about, hey, some of y'all need to go ahead and get on the C.J. Stroud train. Y'all really might have to get on the C.J. Stroud train. We're going to talk about We're going to break it down. Before we get in there, like I've been telling you before, if you're liking the content, man, make sure you're liking the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're watching all the videos. Make sure you comment all the videos. Make sure you're sharing all the videos on all social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, any type of social media platform you use. Make sure you share it on the same social media platforms. Also, follow me on social media. The link in the description below. Hey, we're trying to get this channel growing and growing. It's draft time. It's the you no know, NFL all season. You got a uh, uh, training camp and not training camp, but I mean a uh, uh, free agency. All these things, like I said, draft about to come up. So, hey, so I need this channel to grow, man. I really, really appreciate this. So, hey, man, get this channel growing and growing and growing. Really, really appreciate that. Now, let's talk about. Cause like I said, all this talk has been circled around the number two pick. All this talk is to uh, circle around the position, the quarterbacks, and it's really mainly two. Some people might like the other two, and I don't know why, but it's mostly centered around Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young. And the majority, the consensus pick, the majority of people are Bryce Young fans. And I get it. Heisman Trophy winner, uh, played Alabama, very electric. Like I said, he has the probably the closest similar skill set to Deshaun Watson, who used to be a Houston Texas quarterback the last time the Texans took a quarterback in the first round back in 2017. And I understand, and I get it, and I like Bryce Young a lot. Like I've been saying since the since uh, the end of the season, I don't care. As long as we get one of those two, I'm good. I like both of them equally. But it seems like for people who are, are strongly Bryce Young fans, want no part of C.J. Stroud. Like, they, they just hate the thought of C.J. Stroud to the point that they talk about if somebody lead for all the Texans and draft Bryce Young at one, that the Texans don't even need to take a quarterback at number two, take Will Anderson or take Jalen Carter and just uh, uh, find another way to get a quarterback because they want no part of C.J. Stroud. And I'm like, what is so wrong with C.J. Stroud? Why do people hate C.J. Stroud so much? And people talk about, oh, you know, he got all the receivers. He got the best offensive line. He can't move. Then I hear, and that's on the football side, and, I don't really like the receiver argument. I said this numerous times because we've seen numerous quarterbacks either play with good receivers like a Joe Burrow and Bryce and Bryce Young the year that he uh, won the Heisman Trophy, and then also quarterbacks like I say AJ Brown and DK was on the same team. What what they, what they call his quarterback at? Same thing with uh, uh, um, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham. They were on the same college team. What they, well, what they call his quarterback at? Like, we've seen those guys weren't even thought of to be first-round picks. So, for the simple fact that he's in this conversation, he shouldn't be vilified for that. But I get the offensive line. I understand that. I get the offensive line. That's actually a real, I wouldn't say critique, but that really is something you need to evaluate, especially talking about a pocket passer like CJ. He is playing behind a brick offensive line. So, I understand that that offensive line is not being going to be duplicated in the NFL. So I understand that and I get that part of the conversation. But then I see people talk about, oh, you know, well, he's not he's not a leader. Like, it's like, CJ's not a leader. Like, like CJ's not a leader. Why y'all don't think CJ's a leader? Like, like what does CJ do that y'all think that he's not a leader? And then now I'm hearing that he doesn't have the charisma to be a franchise quarterback. Like, he doesn't have star power. And I don't think he can be on commercials. Like, Bryce Young, Bryce Young has Dr. Pepper commercials. And he has the Heisman Trophy commercial. Well, part of the reason why he has those commercials and endorsements is because he won the Heisman. And last time I checked, you get football, you get endorsements. Because I do, I agree. I believe that Bryce Young is more charismatic than C.J. Stroud. But if CJ Stroud wins and plays well, those endorsements gonna come. Uh, look at Deshaun Watson and Pat Mahomes. Deshaun's way more charismatic, has way more charisma than Patrick Mahomes ever has. But Patrick Mahomes wins. He goes throws fifty touchdowns, five thousand yards, and wins the MVP his first year as a starter. Boom. He has all the commercials, all the endorsements you can think of. He's on everywhere now. Like, you've got pictures and, like, the subway commercial. He has all these different commercials and doing all these things because of what he could do on the field. Pat doesn't have any charisma. Pat 
is not does not have any charisma, but he balls on the field and he's playing that quarterback position, he's gonna get endorsements. JJ, now JJ had charisma. Now luckily JJ has a lot of charisma and JJ White also was a dominant player. But he didn't get those endorsements because he had charisma. He got those endorsements because he was a balling and a player. Like once he, once JJ started balling, then JJ started getting all the endorsements. Now some of JJ stuff would be a little cringy too. But again, you accept it because of the type of player that he is. So I don't think that that's a criticism. Like I, I don't I don't understand that logic. Like oh, the, uh, that logic of it. Now let's get back to football because, like I've been saying it for the longest. They're both extremely similar. More similar than people want to give them credit. They're very, very close. Like, people act like it's a hand above the shoulder between Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. And it's really not. It's very, very close. They both do things well together. Like, they both do the same thing extremely well. Um, uh, almost borderline elite. And then there's things that they don't do as well. But, you know, like, like you know, Bryce Mudd does, does this extremely well, CJ does it. And then CJ does this extremely well, and Bryce does it. So, the, 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 it goes back and forth. That's why I, I, I like them both equally. Like, yes, Bryce is way more mobile and is able to get out in the, get out in the pocket uh, and, and, uh, and get, out, get out of the pocket and make plays on the run, throw plays on the run. I like that. And Bryce can throw from in the pocket. Not saying that Bryce can't throw in the pocket because people got on me like, well, Bryce does throw in the pocket. I know Bryce throws in the pocket. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that he's a non-pocket, but he's not He's not a pure pocket passer, but he does throw in the pocket. He does stay in the pocket. But CJ lives in the pocket. That's the majority of CJ's game is to stand up in the pocket and stand up inside the rush and stand up in the pocket that's the majority of what cj game is and because of that he does that better than bryce does he has better accuracy than bryce does they all talent is pretty much really about the same i might give a slight edge to cj but they i mean i really i mean i i feel like i'm splitting hairs uh they both throw from all platforms they both have a very male a very well mechanics uh like I said, he does. Uh, 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 Bryce, not, CJ doesn't throw on the run as well as Bryce does. I think that's more so because we haven't seen it. But I mean, if I'm gonna say who's better, I'm definitely gonna say Bryce Young is way better throwing from the run. But this is the thing, and this is the reason why I said people need to start getting on board because now people are saying like, no, if we draft CJ, it's a, it's a consolation prize because somebody either jumped up and got uh, Bryce Young if it's the Colts, if it's uh, the uh, Raiders, if it's the Panthers, or if the Bears themselves decide to stick and pick and pick Bryce Young and trade Justin Fields. And that's the only reason why the Texans will end up with C.J. Stroud. I don't think that's the case. That's the reason why I say that, that I think that y'all might want to start getting on the C.J. Stroud train because I, can, I definitely see a, a scenario, I think it's a strong scenario actually, that if the uh, Bears take Will a uh, uh, Will Anson in one, and at two both Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud are both there at two. The Texans take C.J. over Bryce. I know people are like oh, no, 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 no. Yes, there is a strong possibility. There's a strong possibility. Now we haven't got to. Uh, pro days, we haven't got to the combine yet. We haven't got there yet. So, I mean, this is very, very early on in the process. And, and NFL scouts, scouts put a lot in stock in that. I don't think, I don't understand why they don't put more stock into the tape, but they put a lot of stock into those things. And I do think that both of those scenarios, even though I think they both will excel, I think that CJ will have a better performance via his pro day in the combine than Bryce will. When it comes to just standing up in the pocket, throwing, you talking about script, you talking about scripted plays. You're talking about uh, um, play, throwing to receivers that you know very well, especially at your pro day. Uh, um, uh, so I said scripted plays. You're gonna you're gonna do all the things that you know how to do well, and you're not gonna do too many things that you don't do well. And you're just gonna ba basically highlight all your attributes and highlight all your strengths. I think. He's going to he's going to go out there and, and out, he's going to be in that type of situation and he's going to outperform. Remember, I think they both went with the elite eleven, uh, being coached by Gerard Johnson, who is also the core best coach of the, of the Houston Texans now. CJ and Bryce were in there together because they came out the same year. Came both come out of California, and CJ won the MVP. Being coached by Gerard Johnson, who is the core best coach for Houston Texans, um.
we talk about the Dr. Pepper commercials and the Heisman control commercials. Again, he got those things because of he winning the Heisman. Um, CJ also, uh, he has the same marketing agent, if I'm not mistaken, as Deshaun Watson. And he said that he told them during the season, hey, dial some of that stuff back. I want to get focused on football. I want to keep the main thing the main thing because that stuff going to come if I'm playing football. Like, I can have all the endorsements in the world, but if I'm trash at football, that don't mean nothing. I'm good at excel at football. All those endorsements are going to come. And so CJ, to me, strikes me as a very, very football junkie. Not saying that Bryce is not a football junkie. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if Bryce is a football junkie or not. I'm assuming he is, especially being with Bill O'Brien, being with Nick Saban in Alabama. I assume that he is. But as of right now, from what I've seen and what I've heard, CJ strikes me as a huge football junkie. We all know that Nick Casario is an extremely huge football junkie. We know from the things that D'Amico Ryans has said and also the way he played, the way he was able to coach, and the way he was able to uh, uh, be a captain as a rookie, and able to earn the name Cap as a rookie, earn respect from his teammates as a rookie, how he's able to soon see Brian Cushion pour into Brian Cushion to advance Brian Cushion, help Brian Cushion grow as, and become offensive rookie of the year, that he's a football junkie. So I'm saying when you have these meetings and when you have these pro days and you have these combines and you have these personal workouts and you bringing these guys in and you sitting across from this person breaking bread with this person, you can be able to weed out, you know, just coach speak and just, you know, saying the right thing. Because I don't think all these guys are going to go in there and say, this, say stupid things, but you're able to get a feel and know exactly what if a guy is being genuine or for guys just talking just to be talking. And I have a I have a I have a, a strong sense that CJ is gonna come across as a huge football junkie to Nick Asirio and D'Amico Rhymes, who were both football junkies. And that's going to bode well in his favor. Then you click on the tape and you watch all the things that he does well. You watch the combine, you watch the pro days and things like that, all the things that he does well, then all the things that you like off the field or checking off these same boxes, then you have the pro typical size, 6'3", 6'4", 215, 220, 225, wherever he's going to end up weighing and, 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 uh, weighing and, uh, and, and, get, and get his size and height. All these things start checking off, and not to mention, again, Gerard Johnson knows both of them well. Gerard Johnson knows both of them well. He won MVP being coached by Gerard Johnson. And again, I said this before when I talk about this, this offense, talking about uh, the type of offense this Shanahan Kubi offense that they're about to run. Like I said, this offense really boasts a lot well for running backs and tight ends. It gets you 1,000-yard running backs. It gets you 1,000-yard tight ends. They do that ad nauseum in this type of offense. That's what this offense is really predicated and built upon. Look at all the running backs and tight ends that have been in this offense. Play action pass is a very key thing, and Bryce does very well play play action pass. But the thing that is very, very key for a quarterback in this offense is accuracy. They're both accurate, but Bryce is probably the most accurate quarterback. I mean, not Bryce. CJ is probably the most accurate quarterback in this, in this draft. CJ is the most accurate quarterback in this draft. They're both accurate. CJ is more accurate. CJ can move better. The match off better than uh, um, uh, um, Kirk Cousins, better than um, what's his name, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Brock Purdy, Purdy, better than uh, um, um, Jimmy Garoppolo, better than T.J. Yates. Like the guys who've been in this offense outside of RG three, C.J. moves better than. And to be honest, yeah. RG3 could run. RG3 was fast, but RG3, like that part of RG3, he, he didn't know how to get down. He didn't know how to slide. He was a straight line runner. He really wasn't a like RG3 really wasn't good at being elusive. He was a straight, had straight line speed because he was a sprinter and, uh, and a hurdler. He had straight line speed. He wasn't elusive. So he's more, he has more athleticism than anybody that's been in this offense before outside of possibly John Elwood because John Elwood could actually run way more than people really could think. If you go back, especially look at early on John Elway, but by the time this offense was devised, John Elway had been in the league for 10 plus years in the in the mid to late 90s when he ended up, when he won Super Bowl in his offense. So he kind of lost a little bit of that list he had in the 80s 
uh, when he first came into the league. So I can actually put the CJ's probably a little bit more athletic than him because it was John Elway in his later years when he got into this offense versus young John Elway. So really, outside of uh, outside of uh, 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 RG3, he's more athletic. And I can make case he's more athletic than RG3 because RG3 had straight line speed but really wasn't elusive. Now, again, Bryce Young is more athletic than all these guys. So I will give you that. But this offense... This, this offense has been built and been around guys who don't have that same athleticism. I mean, have less athleticism than CJ. So CJ has more than enough athleticism. And he has the key to the offense because he's extremely accurate. He's extremely accurate. It's probably the strength of his game is his accuracy. So, in saying that, when you add in the football junkiness to it, you add in the prototypical size, you add the, uh, the prototypical arm strength, be able to play in the pocket, able to step up inside the pocket and play from within the pocket and not breaking loose when, 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 when plays break down. And like I said, we've seen in the Georgia game, and I think it was the Northwestern game, even though he, I, the Northwestern game was bad because of the weather, but both of those games, he had to rely on his legs a little bit more. So you've seen the athleticism that you need. You've seen the little athleticism that you need, and it's above what you need to run this offense because in the West Coast offense, you do have to move some, but it it's it has he has way more athleticism than this West Coast uh, Shanahan Kubiak offense needs. He has more than enough. I could see them deciding and laying on CJ over Bryce. Over Bryce. And I think that's the problem that Texan fans, especially the people who are Bryce fans, can't seem to fathom. Because I don't think it's head and above shoulders Bryce like everybody else is. Again, I'm not him, I'm not saying it's CJ head and above I'm not saying nobody is head above shoulders. Again, if you like Bryce over CJ. I understand, but I, I definitely understand that. I get it. I'm not going to argue with you if you like Bryce over CJ. I'm not going to argue if you like CJ over Bryce. I am going to argue if you like uh, uh, A or Will Lev uh, Will Levis over any of these two guys. I'm going to argue then. We're going to go back and forth. If you like those two over these two, I'm, I'm going to go back and forth with you. But these two, when CJ and Bryce and Bryce and CJ, I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go back and forth. If you like either or over, I don't care who you like over. Now, if you start saying, like, if you start just, actually criticizing one or the other, I'm going to defend the other, but I don't have a preference. A lot of people do, and a lot of people's preference is Bryce over CJ. I understand and I get it, but I'm trying to let you know this, that you might have to change your thinking because you might have a choice to get both. I mean, get one or the other. It might not just be, oh, uh, uh, one is gone, so we got to take the other. There's a strong possibility that they're both on the table. And they don't go the way that you want them to go. What are you going to do there? Like, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't. Click that bell. Get more videos. I holla.